All right, here's gonna be a quick tutorial on how to fix uh, the common P0411 problem um, on a GM Ecotec engine, um, direct injected ones specifically. This is a 2014 Impala, and it has a P0411 code. Um, the secondary air pump, and that's for, before I keep going, that code is for um, improper flow for the air injection system uh, for emissions. The secondary air pump down at the back of the engine is working fine. Um, this pressure sensor and valve pressure sensor is working fine. I assume the valve is working fine. And a common problem with these cars when they're not run, um, they're not warmed up all the way, run short distances, um, not run hard, is that the air injection ports behind the exhaust manifold clog up with carbon deposits. So we are going to take everything off and clean those out and hopefully clear the code. So the first step is going to be remove the top engine cover. It is three um, Torx T30s that go in here. And then you're going to want to um, pop off your oil cap to get the plastic cover off. This guy right here. And then the next step is going to be to remove four 10 millimeter um, bolts right there. You have to pry this wiring harness out of that hole and then remove this heat shield. Next step after this little heat shield is off is you're going to want to remove the oxygen sensor and the manifold heat shield. So oxygen sensor is just uh, that plug right there. And then um, it's going to be a big socket in the manifold. And then this heat shield is going to be three 10 millimeters there, there, and one right under the oxygen sensor. I've got the... Uh, exhaust manifold heat shield off and in order to do that you're gonna have to remove this um, air injection system valve so to do that you're gonna remove this hose which is two tabs on top and bottom that's the uh, knurled part you squeeze them together and pull it off of the um, nipple on the valve and then on the top here is the plug for the pressure sensor and the valve and this is simply a tab that you press on this side and it'll lift up that little window and lift it over that tooth on here. Um, make sure you press it hard to ensure that it doesn't break the tooth off, um, but it should come off easily. And then under here, there are just two 13 millimeter bolts that hold the valve onto the um, cylinder head there. And then uh, that is the port where the air is um, allowed in. All right, and so now the manifold is exposed. This one's still a little hot, so I'm gonna let it cool down. Um, in order to, you actually don't have to remove the oxygen sensor. Um, once you unplug it, you can just feed this through the heat shield, the pigtail through the heat shield. Um, in order to unplug it, it's kind of tricky. Um, this is the bottom part, and this is the oxygen sensor side. It plugs in uh, just like this, it goes into there. So the way that you're gonna to wanna to do this is you're gonna to wanna to flip this white tab down, push it down along um, kind of its slide direction, push it down twice all the way, and then you're gonna to have to squeeze the white tab in, compress this bottom part in while pulling the top part out. Um, so push the white tab down twice and then squeeze it kind of towards the wires in, if I can get it just like that, in that direction. Uh, it's not very good. Let's see if I can get it from this way. You're gonna wanna press down on the tab from this direction once it's pushed down towards the bottom of the car. So here's the uh, air injection system valve split open. So this just sits right on here like that. And this is the flap that the valve actuates to let air in. And there's a little bit of buildup um, kind of all this stuff right here, but it's really not too bad, um, at least compared to some I've seen. And then this looks pretty clean too. You can still see the, uh, the lines of the piece, um, and there are no real huge cakes of carbon or anything, so, but I'll still, I'll wipe them off carefully, um, being mindful of the sealing surface and, uh, put it back together and continue. So here's the air injection valve cleaned up. As you can see, it actually, I just used some brake clean. I uh, cleaned up pretty well. Um, thankfully, no big deposits. I was careful around this flap that it blows out of. 
and also careful with the uh, rubber seal that seals it to the housing. Um, yeah, but other than that, just tried to get all the big bits off of it. Um, I'm not sure. I think the exhaust pressure probably shuts that flap um, when the system's done running. But yes, so I'm going to put this back together and then on to the manifold. So here it is with the manifold out and actually plugs removed. We'll get to that in a second. So um, if you're lucky, you might get the whole stud in the catalytic converter out with the nut, which looks like this. Um, in which case you can just unbolt. There are five 13 millimeter bolts that hold the manifold on. You can just take those out and the manifold lifts straight off. Um, but if you have a stud on there, you're going to need to drop this down because the stud is going to be in the way of removing the manifold. So in that case, um, what you're going to need to do is there's a, you're going to need to go under the car and there's a 15 millimeter there and a 13 millimeter just below it. And then one more 13 millimeter, uh, on the oil pan. And those are, that's a bracket that's holding the, the cap and the whole front section of the exhaust on. So once you take those off, you'll be able to drop it down. Just make sure to let it down gently. Um, yeah, and then your manifold should be good to come off. All right, so once the manifold is off, you're ready to take your uh, freeze plugs out. So there are three here, here, and here. And I got the middle one out um, with normal, normal methods, just chiseling it on an edge. And it tilted and pulled it out with some pliers. But the other two uh, would not come out with just chiseling the edge. So I drilled um, three 30 seconds holes in each, and then just tried to drive in some number six screws, and then I leveraged them off with uh, the claw of a hammer. So that should work too. They're not in super tight, but you have to get a good grip on them. All right, so finally, this is the heart of the issue, um, is the carbon buildup uh, in these ports. So when you get the, when you get the freeze plugs off, um, your ports, may look kind of clean the center one looks like a looks just like a transport port um, but the sides i think distribute to the cylinders and you can see there's a lot of um what just looks like kind of coal in there just carbon buildup from the exhaust gases recirculating so um i think i'm going to start with just vacuuming out the loose stuff and then taking a pick and carving out as much as i can and then maybe spraying it with some cleaner and maybe using a pipe cleaner to get out as much as I can then. Um, and I'm gonna take my time doing this because once the new plugs go back on, um, then you gotta start all over again, so. Yep, just be sure to clean these out well. All right, so each of the side ports um, has the, the cylinder or the exhaust port feeds for the air system. So that hole going to the right there um, comes out in this exhaust port, so maybe. I get the camera just right. Of course, there's no light, but I don't know if you'll be able to see in here. Can you just wiggle that pick? Oh yeah, there's the pick. You can see the pick right next to the exhaust valve. So that's kind of the path that the the port takes. And these two, this is this one's Siamese between these two cylinders, and then this is just um, transport, and then this one Siamese is to these two cylinders. So once you've kind of scraped out the ports with a pick as best you can, um, I found that taking a pipe cleaner and twisting it in two to get the right width, or the right girth, is pretty effective. And then um, spraying it with a little brake parts cleaner. Careful not to spray brake parts cleaner. Uh, into the holes directly because at least this cylinder the exhaust valves are open so you'd be spraying the brake parts cleaner right into the cylinder so I would spray it on this then clean it out and then spray the ports out with compressed air so the ports are the um, yeah the ports have been cleaned through these access holes in the front um, after a couple rounds of compressed air picking um, pipe cleaners brake cleaner and uh, that's about as good as I got them. So let this serve as a reference, maybe if you're doing this, um, maybe aim for that level of cleanliness. And don't forget that um, the transfer passageways, it enters here, it goes under this port, and then under these two here, they can get clogged as well. So 
Um, make sure to spray compressed air kind of that direction, that direction is as parallel to this mating surface as you can to clear those out. So I think it's time to tap the uh, new plugs in. Now I'm on to reassembly and I first cleaned up the mating surface of the exhaust ports and now I installed um, a new seal between the manifold and the cat. It's just like a round compression fitting. And what I'm going to do now is put the manifold gasket in there and lift up the cat and manifold and put some bolts in loosely um, to kind of hold everything in place. And then I'm going to reinstall the bracket down there that holds the cat up. Everything just kind of threaded in snugly but not tight. And then I'm going to tighten the manifold first to the cylinder head and then I'm going to tighten the cat. And then I'll tighten the bracket to kind of hold everything in the optimal sealing position. All right, so car is back together. Um, like I said, I tightened the, um, I, I actually put a jack under the exhaust to lift it into place before that bracket was tight, um, bottom of the cat bracket, tightened manifold to head, tightened in this order, then tightened the cat to the manifold, then went back under and tightened up that bracket. It was, it was located correctly at that point. Um, then I test started it, made sure there were no leaks. The check engine light actually uh, stayed off during the test start, which was awesome. I recommend you clear the code before the test start to give yourself the, uh, the best chance. And then, um, yeah, just uh, this heat shield back on, this heat shield back on, and then cover back on. And then take it for a test drive, make sure you don't have any exhaust leaks. And um, do a couple cold starts to make sure the code stays away.